uh, say you have a container of nitrogen. Uh, now, uh, there's another container of oxygen, which is the same volume and at the same temperature. Now, this nitrogen within this container has a certain pressure. We call this uh, the partial pressure of nitrogen. Uh, the pressure, there's the pressure of oxygen in this other container as well. We call this the partial pressure of oxygen. Now, if you were to send this oxygen over into uh, your original nitrogen container, you would have a container now with two gases. And being the same volume as the original, uh, there would be a greater new pressure uh, because uh, the nitrogen is still colliding uh, with the wall just like uh, before and the oxygen is now colliding with, within that wall as well, uh, there's going to be uh, more total pressure because there's uh, more particles colliding with the wall. That total pressure is going to be the sum of the pressure of oxygen and the pressure of nitrogen within that, within that container. Uh, but also being that you have the same temperature and volumes, it's going to be the sum of the original uh, partial pressure of nitrogen and oxygen. So there's just this uh, general equation. The total pressure within a container is uh, the sum of the pressures of all the constituent gases. Now, uh, we can describe the average kinetic energy of particles uh, by their temperature. In fact, uh, temperature is directly related to the average kinetic energy of a gas. Um, and also, uh, we could say that the average kinetic energy of an oxygen particle or oxygen particles at a given temperature is the same as the average kinetic energy of nitrogen particles at a given temperature. For, for a temperature of, say, uh, 298 Kelvin, both nitrogen and oxygen have the same average kinetic energy. Hence, uh, they'll have the same effect on pressure because they'll have the same force of impact against uh, the wall of a container, being that they have the same average kinetic energy. Because nitrogen and oxygen behave uh, in the same way and have the same effect on pressure, uh, we could say that if 20% of the overall particles in a container are oxygen, then 20% of the pressure within that container comes from oxygen. The number of moles of the gas are directly uh, related to the pressure from that gas. Uh, we can uh, describe this using this first equation here, uh, where you've seen that PV is equal to nRT before. Uh, similarly, V is equal to nRT over, actually, sorry, P is equal to nRT over V. But this equation applies to the overall number of gaseous particles, uh, the number of moles of, 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 uh, of a gas, but also, it can refer to the number of moles of a specific gas. For example, if you know the number of moles of specifically oxygen, you can know the pressure of specifically oxygen. We see that pressure, if it increases, uh, means that the number of moles of oxygen is increased as well. Or if we increase the number of moles of oxygen, we increase the pressure of oxygen. These are directly related. This is in agreement with our previous statement you'll be needing to use mole fraction of things in our calculation. Now, uh, x is mole fraction. So if we write x O2, we mean the fraction of all the moles of gas over the total number of all gaseous particles. In our top container, we had one mole of oxygen, and we had four moles of nitrogen. Now, the total number of moles uh, in that container was five. So one out of those five uh, particles was oxygen. Perhaps we could say that 20% uh, of the particles were oxygen, or the mole fraction was 0.20. Now, uh, I could tell you that we have five moles of gas, and 20% of them are oxygen, or 0.20 is the mole fraction of them. You could surmise that we have one mole of oxygen within the container. But being that uh, the number of moles of a gas is directly proportional to the pressure of the gas, we can uh, replace this equation with the pressures of things. For example, um, we could say uh, that 
uh, we could presume the pressure of oxygen. Let's say that we had one overall atmosphere of pressure. And uh, oxygen made up 20% of the gas within the container, or its mole fraction was 0.20. We could say that uh, the pressure of that oxygen then is uh, 0.20 atmospheres. Or uh, you could say that you know that the pressure of oxygen is 0.20 atmospheres, and the overall pressure uh, within the container is one atmosphere. You could presume the mole fraction of oxygen. Um, so 0.2 over, over 1 is 0.2. So uh, we've got those equations, and also uh, we can write uh, that equation from way up top as well. These are kind of the central equations for partial pressure. Now, uh, partial pressure is sometimes relevant to collecting uh, gases uh, while bubbling through water. Let's say that you wanted to collect oxygen. One way to do that would be to decompose potassium chlorate by heating. When that occurs, oxygen is released. And in order to get oxygen released uh, and collect it within a container which can change volume easily, uh, you might be bubbling it uh, through oxygen. Now, uh, when you do that, uh, oxygen is collected over the water, but uh, there's also uh, going to be some partial pressure of water above uh, the liquid water as well. The total pressure is equal to the pressure of oxygen plus uh, the pressure of water. So sometimes you'll be curious just what is the pressure of oxygen? Well, uh, that would be the total pressure minus uh, the pressure of, of water. You need to separate out the partial pressure of water to get pressure of any other gas collected above water. Uh, sometimes uh, you'll need to uh, dig through data tables to find uh, the partial pressure of water for a given temperature. You may recall that as temperature increases, the partial pressure uh, of a gas increases. Uh, and so, uh, for example, uh, the, as temperature rises to 100 degrees Celsius, uh, the partial pressure of water increases to 760 millimeters of mercury. So you can find values in, in data tables. Uh, however, I would say that uh, in most frequently at 25 degrees Celsius, the partial pressure of water is uh, 23.76 uh, millimeters of mercury. That's the partial pressure of water at room temperature. All right, that's all. Thanks, guys.